part B. Uh, I held your hand through this, right? I showed you that the first step was to look at the function you've been given, break it apart into its, into its, its components, and then put them together, see what happens when you add orders. Have a look at part B, see if you can have a go at that one. The hint I will give you before you start to draw it is that you've been given a subtraction. You've been given a subtraction. You've been given it like this. Right? Now, subtraction of ordinates works the same way, except that instead of saying, oh, 1 plus 1 equals 2, I'd say 1 minus 1 equals 0, or something like that. Okay? You can do it that way if you like. Alternatively, if you want to use all of the techniques we just developed over the last five minutes, you actually can write this as a sum, not as a difference. It's a difference right now. How would I write this so that there's a plus in the middle, not a minus? Minus x plus root x. Yeah, so this root x out the front is positive, no problems, right? But I can write minus x as plus negative x. Now, for us, we're so used to the way these signs work that we're like, aren't those the same thing? But 3 minus 5 and 3 plus negative 5 are actually talking about two different ideas, right? This one is about the difference between two things. And this one is about the sum of two things. It's just that one of them is facing in the opposite direction. Now, we know because of we're really good at arithmetic now that these have the same value, but they don't have the same meaning. So you can approach this either way, whichever you'd like to have a go at. I'll give you a few minutes to get a head start on me, and then I'll show you how I draw it. Now, I pointed out in the first graph, okay, this is what it looks like if you've only got one colour, uh, but it is loads easier to do it too. Hey Nathan, can I pinch this room just temporarily? And if you want, I'll give this back to you when I'm done. Thank you. Okay, so um, I've done this with two colours this time. So here are my component graphs. As I said, you can, if you like, do root x and do x this guy, instead of negative x, and then do a subtraction. But what I find um, most people experience is that addition, visually, is just loads easier to do than subtraction. So this is the way that I've just sort of settled on doing it. Do what works for you, okay? Now, this is interesting because I'm going to do the same addition and subtraction of ordinates that I did before, but I'm gonna try and push on you a little extra to think about this. The first thing I'm gonna ask about is the first thing I asked over here. Have a look at the negative side. What's going on for the domain x is less than zero? Hmm. Well, you get this negative x guy, right? He's fine. But the square root of x, remember this is the Cartesian plane, not the Argan plane, okay? So the square root of negative x doesn't exist. You got, you got nothing, these are all real values, remember? So it, root x doesn't exist over there, and that's, that's why I only have this part of the graph, okay? So in order to have the whole function, you need to have each of the bits of the function, okay? Um, so therefore, since this guy doesn't exist, the, the whole thing does not exist over here, okay? So I don't need to draw anything on the left-hand side. Okay, that's the first thing I will notice. The second thing is then I can say, well, now my ordinates begin somewhere, right, at x equals zero. So what are both ordinates equal to at x equals zero? Answer, zero. So that's cool, that's a nice, Easy one to pick out, it's fine. And now I'm going to start to move off to the right. So, for example, if I just go in integers, right? If I go x equals 1, x equals 1, what is the ordinate of root x? It's the square root of 1, which is 1. Okay, so I'm just going to um, put a, a marker there for 1. So up here, the ordinate is 1. Okay, what's the corresponding ordinate on the other part of the graph? It's negative 1, because x equals 1, and this graph is y equals negative x, right? So when I add those ordinates together, what's going to happen? Huh, okay. But as soon as you go a little bit further, things start to get more interesting. Now, because that's the root x function, I, I don't want to do 2 or 3. I'm going to go straight to 4, because it's a square number. So I'm just going to get something neat out of this, right? You can pick any values you like. I might as well pick ones that are convenient to me. So if this is 0 and then 1, I guess 2 and 3 and 4. I've gone off there, but you'll see I've got enough detail on here. When I go x equals 4, what is the ordinate up here? It's 2. And my scale's reasonable. That looks about twice as high. Correspondingly, the ordinate down here will be 
Four. Yeah, negative four, right? So when you add them together to two. negative four, negative. you're going to get ne negative two, aren't you? So instead of being here, I look like I'm going to be somewhere like that, okay? Now, here's where I'm pushing on you a little more. You, you add the ordinates, but this starts to get tiresome quite quickly. In here, you look like you're quite close together. These guys are sort of fighting with each other. You can almost think of them kind of like a tug of war, and things seem to be locked in place. But then down here, things start going that way, right? And if I go further, x equals 9, for instance, right? This is going to be 3, and this one's going to be negative 9, right? So this guy is winning. Why is he winning? What is it about the graphs? What geometrically tells me that this guy will win and this guy will lose? Yeah, it's about gradient. It's about steepness, right? So this guy has a, a constant gradient. Right? It's negative one all the way, okay? What's happening to the gradient of this? It's decreasing. It's decreasing. Uh, it never goes negative. It never drops back down, but he's slowing down and he's slowing down forever. You can, of course, actually confirm this because we know how to differentiate now, right? If I wanted to differentiate this, I wouldn't write it as root x. How would I write it? X to the power of a half, right? So when you differentiate that, what do you do with that power? You do two things, right? You, you bring it out the front, you bring it out the front, so it's going to be half, and then you reduce this by one, right? So that's going to become this, yes? Now I've, I've put it in index form so I could differentiate it, but now I'm going to put it back into a, a nice neat form, into radical form. That's one on two root of x, okay? So you can see as x gets bigger and bigger and bigger, what's happening to this? This is the gradient it gets smaller and smaller and smaller, okay? So I guess if you want to think about this in tug of war terms, which is a helpful metaphor to have, this guy just keeps chugging on. Energizer bunny, doesn't stop, never gets tired. Whereas this guy is like, uh, you know, I want to go home. I'm getting progressively more exhausted. So that's why this guy wins, okay? So I know I'm heading down that way. And I'm also going to head down steeper and steeper, right? The last question is, what's happening in here? Because I don't actually know, right? So I've got, I've got two things that I could do here, right? Number one, I could just add ordinates like I did before, right? So for example, if this is zero and one, what's a value you'd like me to put in here? How about a half? A half will work, okay? So if I go for a half in there, I know what the ordinate here is, be negative a half, okay? What will the ordinate on top be? This is, um, this is root x, right? So this will be root a half, which is one on root two, which is, does anyone know what one on root two is? Come on, this is a tricky exact value. Sorry. From memory, I think it's about 0.7. Okay, you can go check it out on your calculator, okay? But the important thing about it is that 0.7 is fighting with negative 0.5, right? It was negative half, that's what we said before. So who's winning in this little patch? Root x is winning, right? And you can kind of see it, can't you? Can you visualize it? Look, he starts off steep. He starts off so well, right? And then it's later on he gets tired. Whereas this is our, um, this is our tortoise, right? The slow and steady and he never speeds up, never slows down. So what you're getting up here, uh, this is the value I picked. This is like 0.7 versus negative 0.5. So 0.2, 0.2. So what you're going to get, uh, let's, let's actually get the real thing now. Actually, I'll, I'll draw it and then we'll confirm it. Is you're getting this kind of behavior, like that. And if I show you this, you can kind of see what's going on. Okay, so I'll zoom in a little bit. Can you see what's happening? There is, in fact, a stationary point there, right? Now, you're not expected to find the stationary point at the moment, but um, you had to know there was a stationary point, right? <coughs> How could you know, even before I showed you that it was there? Think about the features, right? Initially, this guy's winning. Right? He's winning. But it doesn't last very long. This guy eventually takes over. Well, what we call that, if you're going up and then you're going down, we call that a turning point, right? And these graphs are continuous, so it's not like a, it's not like a sharp thing like this. So therefore, there must be some point at which the derivative is zero. It's, there it is. Okay. You can find that by calculus. You can verify it. Okay.